Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Uh, Cheryl, Danielle, we all know the global crisis over the past year has touched us all and has also put many families in a situation that they never dreamed that they would be in, including not knowing how they were going to get enough food to eat. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so scary. And a group in San Diego is helping families bridge the gap by bringing together the resources and generosity of the community. So we want to welcome Bob Kamensky from Feeding San Diego to the show. Bob, so good to see you. Thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So Feeding San Diego is focused on alleviating hunger in San Diego County, but the organization is different from a traditional food bank. Tell us exactly what Feeding San Diego does. Well, it's very simple. We feed people. <laughs> However, we do it in a different way in that our primary focus is on what is called food rescue. And food rescue comes in a couple different ways. Uh, one of those would be for uh, food producers like uh, grocery stores, and uh, we then get that into our agency partners for distribution in the local communities where there are needs by people. The second way is by doing food rescue with farmers, because you'll have a lot of agricultural production, and they can't get all of their product to market because the market may be saturated. Well, rather than having them plow it under, or just dispose of it in the fields. We accept that fresh produce in large volume into our warehouse where we inject it into our uh, distribution center um, supply chain that allows for distribution to the communities in need. Wow. Well, I mean, with this pandemic this past year, a lot of people in the community have needed assistance with food who may not have needed help in the past. So. Who are some of the populations that you are helping now? Well, I tell you, that has been an amazing um, eye-opening experience for us because you're looking at a lot of very um, high-end professionals, mid-class, middle-class type workers who are now just, they're idle. And it may have been for three, four, six months in some cases where they just don't have work because the pandemic has impacted their industry. We had, and this is from the San Diego Hunger Coalition, whom we use as our authoritative source for data, one in three San Diegans in our county have gone with food insecurity since November. And the data just most recently delivered in February is showing the same statistics. That's one third of our population. That's over a million people, of which 280,000 of those are children. But we've had senior citizens impacted, college students, uh, military families, uh, cancer patients and their families because they've now been sequestered to their homes during the pandemic. And to be able to access food, uh, it's been a real challenge. It really has. And you mentioned the military as well. And I know there are certain circumstances where the military families might need some help. And I know you have some partnerships with organizations to help out as well. Talk about that a little bit. Well, first, I would like to say that having been in the military myself for a 35 year career, I know firsthand what can happen to military families. Mm. And in the case here in San Diego, I gave you that little statistic about how many people were being uh, faced with food insecurity. Here's another interesting little statistic. Over 37% of the people who live in this county, one way or another, are associated with the military. Whether it's an active duty military member, a military member's family, a veteran, or families of veterans, that's well over a million people, almost it's like 1.2 million people here in San Diego County are related to the military in one fashion or another. We've been impacted in that particular community, particularly the active military families, because the pandemic sequestered people to home, that many who relied on a second source of income, the spouse having to work because of the cost of living here, mm and without the ability to really raise the cost of living allowance to the military family members. So well, we, Bob, we know that, 
We know that Feeding San Diego also partners with other organizations that already provide services to the military. How do those partnerships work? Well, we have over a dozen organizations that we serve with in uh, helping bridge the gap for food on some cases. Uh, Examples are the USO, uh, the Veterans Village of San Diego, which I'll come back and touch on again in just a minute, Uh, the STEP team, which is the serving uh, the enlisted program, STEP, Uh, Armed Services YMCA, Uh, some of the public schools that are directly related to uh, military families because that's where their cluster of the families live in military provided housing. And uh, we have been able to uh, provide food through those sources where before they weren't looking for food in most cases, they were looking for other items, diapers for babies, um, assistance with financial uh, shortfalls while a husband or a spouse was deployed. We were then asked, hey, we're finding a need that has been under the surface for a long time, and that is food. Can we just get them some basic sustenance to bridge the gap until that next paycheck comes in? So we've been providing significantly there. There's one element that I would like to emphasize on with regard to an an earlier reference to the Veterans Village of San Diego. VVSD partnered with us, VVSD being an organization that served homeless veterans who were on the street, bringing them off the street and giving them some health care, giving them shelter and food. We partnered with them during the uh, period prior to Memorial Day to have veterans come in and provide assistance in packaging and then eventually doing work as volunteers at a drive through distribution, specifically focused on military families and veterans. And what a tremendous event that was. It's so nice that people come out and they help out and they care. And to wrap everything up today, where can our viewers get more information if they need food assistance or if they wanna donate or volunteer? Well, first on the food assistance, they can visit the Feeding San Diego dot org website. In particular, they can go to the find food um, subtitle, click on it, put in a zip code, and they'll be able to find where the closest source of provisioning can be done from our partners and agencies. For the other side, volunteers, that can come in three different ways. One of those is financial donation. Our dollar, when you provide it to us, can go a much further distance than you just providing us with bags of groceries to put into the distribution. The second one is volunteers. We need volunteers. We rely on 12 to 14,000 volunteers a year to help us with packaging and distribution of goods to the community. The third way, which is a new innovative way that we have just now launched, is instead of using the hearts and hands of people, is to use the intellect, where we're using crowdsourcing techniques, putting that out to the volunteer community so they can work from home to provide to us intellect on subjects that we're not that smart on, but we're facing a challenge or an issue with. And that can be done through either the donor tab or the volunteer tab associated with our website. All right, Bob, thank you so much. I can feel your passion about this and thank you for your military service as well. Well, you are most welcome. As I say, I'm continuing from uniform service to civic service Mm -hmm. and very proud of it. Thanks so much, Bob. All right, Feeding San Diego, one of our favorite uh, people to visit with. But coming up next, we're gonna visit a very special summer camp. You don't wanna miss it. 